Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters. <laughs> It was back in 1951 when the Department of Crazy erupted. Almost socially irresponsible cars boasting new unleashed performance were built by Chrysler in Detroit, trumping the industry, hosting the most go, the most power and the most forward look body styles out of any stock saloon type car. At this time, Ford and Chevy were left in the dust. Across Mopar, Chrysler, Dodge and Plymouth were all invited to the performance party. 1951, the Hemi V8 was introduced. At 331 cubic inches, this hemispherical headed air pump sucked in the atmosphere and spat it out quick, making a paddock full of 180 horses, 20 more than Cadillac at the time. This golden era doused the automotive consumer with luxurious cars and it quickly led to drag racing in huge proportions for the more standard level car. This era eventually evolved to smaller bodied cars, still powered by Hemi designs and carried the same Hemi traditions into the Chrysler small block V8s. By the time the mid-1960s came about, Valiants were well and truly being made by Plymouth in the USA and of course sold and made here in Australia. The unique Mopar shape of the early US Barracuda streamed its way into the Australian design of what we called the AP5 from May 1963 to February 1965. The AP6 from March 1965 to February 1966. Then the VC Valiant from March 1966 to September 1967. This five year span of this particular shape Valiant is the era of the spotlight emphasis in this year's Chrysler event. And you will see more on this week's episode of Classic Restos right after this. It's thanks to Shannon's. Ask about multi-policy discounts and sign up for the Shannon's Club. Call 134646 for a quote and see more at shannons.com.au. And Heron Forbes has the range. Buy online at machinerihouse.com.au. G'day, I'm Fletch, and on this week's show, I have travelled to Albury Wodonga on the beautiful border of where the states of Victoria and New South Wales choose to meet. Yes, it's that time again for the largest gathering of Mopars in the southern hemispherical head, uh, uh, he hemisphere. Welcome to the 29th annual Chrysler's on the Murray. Again, here we have it, one of the largest classic automotive events put on by the Aubrey Wodonga Chrysler Club, one of the smaller car clubs in Australia that packs a big punch. American style origin of motor car, leading to sales in Australia with 1008 R-Series sold in just two months back in early 1962. And that is where the love affair began with our mighty Valiant. Maybe you owned one, maybe you didn't. But from what I have gathered over the years, each person I have spoken to that has owned a Valiant said it was one of the best cars they've ever had. I guess the owners these days are now the Grinners. Here we have a car that enjoyed a relatively short production time in Australia. The amazing S series commenced in March 1962 through to possibly the best Valiant ever made, the CM series, ending on a sad day when Mitsubishi ceased production in August of 1981. It doesn't matter what type of Valiant you own, each model has its own personal level of individual coolness. And now you're about to see some more. 
If you're into your Chryslers, and even if you're not, Chryslers on the Murray, it's the big daddy, it's the grand final, so to speak. It's the pinnacle show. Guys like this from the Aubrey Rodonga Chrysler Club. How you doing, Trev? Well, Fletch, thanks very much. How do you like that for an intro? Yeah, it's big. <laughs> big intro. Thought we'd start today's show with your car, AP5, a safari wagon. It's something a little bit different. Wagons are cool. You've got a beautiful one. Tell us the deal there, Trev. I've had it about uh, four years. Uh, a fellow up in Coffs Harbour did it up as a nut and bolt resto, but it wasn't every nut and bolt, it turned out. Uh, I bought it sight unseen and picked it up from Port Macquarie and drove it back down to uh, Melbourne. Trev, such an incredible transition coming from the S-Series to the AP5. We're looking at a car with different lines, a little more square, lower down. You can still appreciate, though, the nice lines that the wagon has back in 1963. Of course, the legendary Slant 6 engine followed through. What a great device that was. We're looking at an automatic transmission, the Baby Torque Flight, a 904, uh, a virtual I indestructible driveline for the era. And um, it's just so nice to see this car here today. We don't seem to have that same transition now with our new cars in terms of radical shape from year to year. But in the early 60s, we could go from 62 and then go to 63 with an entirely different shape. Yes, absolutely. Um, and you see some of the older Dodgers with the fins on them here and you see the transition in the America cars and you see the transition here in, in those early the R and the S series, like you say, across to this one. This is a 63, it's a very early 63 Canadian body. It's got the reverse sweep uh, wipers on it. She's the push button. And just to be able to, uh, to drive around in these things and park them up next to other people's cars and see the differences over the years, it's just beautiful. Uh, new cars today, it's like buying a, an electric kettle or a hairdryer, you know, they all look the same. Yeah, and, uh, yeah but, uh, but Trev, look at Look at the uh, look at the results from the hairdryer, though. Eh? It's, oh, uh, magnificent! Yeah, place. and uh, yeah, yours, your hairdryer works over time too, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. On that note, mate, let you get back to it. Great talking to you. Uh, thanks for sharing your wagon with us, Trev. And uh, first, cap off the rank for this uh, episode of Classic Restos 2018 Crises on the Murray. Thanks, thanks, mate. Fletch. Good on you, mate. My passion for cars began when Nana and Pop bought their new Toyota Crown. It was Nana's, really. She loved that car. We went everywhere in it. My passion now is just the same, even though my cars were a little different. I've still got Nana's car, couldn't part with it. And I reckon if she was here today, she'd be insured with Shannon's too. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. How would you like to double your garage space and work on your cars easily? Well, bring in your own hero with a Lift King hoist. Easy to install models in one, two and four post styles. Check the very nifty Spider 2500 portable mini scissor lift. Hero hoists are either Oz certified or carry the Euro CE, your guarantee of quality construction and reliability. I regularly stand under my Lift King, so when you need a bit of a lift, why don't you go stand under yours? Martin's Panel Masters has three modern accident repair centres. They service Melbourne's inner, outer east and the fast growing south east corridor. Your vehicle will receive the best from state of the art repair equipment finished beautifully from computer based paint mixing systems. Finished in Australian compliant spray booths. Martin's Panel Masters, located at Fern Tree Gully and Berwick, also Box Hill Panels. If you have a restoration project, Hair and Forbes has the tools that you need. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Hair and Forbes has the range. Back in 1987, Chrysler in the United States of America purchased AMC and the main reason for doing this was to obtain the product and of course the brand of Jeep. Because of this affiliation, the Albury Wodonga Chrysler Club invite the AMC guys here to Chrysler's on the Murray each and every year. 
Moving along, Crisis on the Murray 2018. How are you, Ruben? Oh, very good, thanks, Fletch. And yourself? Oh, mate, mate, great. You couldn't be better on a day like this, could you? No, it's just a magic day, mate. Perfect weather for it. What's beautiful is the shapes, the colours, row after row. Topping over 800 cars this year at this event, which is just amazing. Yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? Um, I haven't actually been up here for quite a few years, so it's uh, actually good to see more and more cars around each year. Yeah, it's good. Check this out, a 1966 AP6 Regal. Yes, factory V8. Yep, drove here in style. Unbelievable. Now, these cars were like the Fairmont gear of the, of the Falcon back in the time. They had a little bit of extra bright work, some beautiful side trim pieces down by the door, different wheel covers, of course, the 273 V8. The interior to die for, that is just amazing as well. What's the story there? Now, you must have restored this car. Run us through. Bought it from Hopper's Crossing off the original owner. Uh, he'd had it shedded since uh, probably about 1982. I went there and struck up a deal with him, and uh, yeah, within the next few weeks, I had it back home and uh, started a resto, which took about 12 months, so it was quite quick. Kicking off first engine up front. Now, 273, uh, tough as. They're a strong little engine. One thing about all the Chrysler small blocks, they're all as strong as each other. So regardless of the cubic capacity, they were just as tough. And a matter of fact, the 273 actually uh, solid lifters as well. Yep. Uh, was pretty much set up for racing, closed chamber heads, solid cam. Um, yeah, pretty much had all the good gear in it from, from the get-go, so yeah. Chrysler really knew how to build a, build a little small block, that's for sure. They certainly did, and a lot of characteristics from the early Hemis in the 50s came right through into the, well, through the Poly era, the, the LA series as well, of uh, the small block V8s as well, the valve angles, um, they're, a, they're a great engine. When you open them up and put four-barrel intakes on them and a, and a four-barrel carb, wow, and if you do a different cam, they certainly do come to life. Ruben, the interior of the car is amazing, the black vinyl seats, even the colour of the dashboard, painted the same as the car, original controls up there, the cluster unit around the dash, just beautiful mate. Yeah I really, uh, that's why I fell in love with uh, you know the AP6 is just the layout, the interior design and everything I reckon you know, I might be biased but in my personal opinion they're probably one of the best Valiants ever made yeah. and uh, yeah that's that's what sort of attracts me to the car, just the look of the car, the way everything sort of set out and yeah, yeah they really they really built a good uh, factory V8 car for its time. Yeah. Good on you, mate. Thanks for being on today's episode. And it's one of these cars that once upon a time you would never think that the amount of attention to detail would be given in a restoration so many decades down the track. And I reckon that's pretty cool as well. So good on you, Ruben. Thanks, mate. Thanks very much, Fletch. Time now for a nice story on today's show. How are you, Alison? Fantastic. And yourself, Fletch? Good. Great. I had to speak to you. Now, we've already had an AP6 on today's show. Mm-hmm. We have your car here, which is another AP6, but a wagon. Yes. But the reason we're going to have a chat is because of your story. What uh, would you like to share with us? Well, uh, this one's a little bit unique. Um, I've, I'm a bit of a hoarder and a bit sentimental as through the scales of things. And uh, originally this wagon was my grandfather's vehicle. Um, it was bought brand new back in the day from... Oh, are you going to test me? Motors Limited, I in, think. In 1965? In 65 Chryslers. My dad used to work at Chryslers as well. And um, this one was uh, bought for a purpose um, as a tow vehicle for their trucking business. So they needed a workhorse, really, to have a bit of grunt over the other vehicles made back in yeah. that time. Got the 273 V8 <laughs> up front. Absolutely, yeah. So it's um, a factory V8 and, um, yeah, still going strong. I managed to get over here and with no dramas, really. So. Okay, so you've driven it on your own. Now, where have you driven from? Uh, Adelaide, South Australia, to Albury, Wodonga, my God. So it, it's... Um, it was a bit of a test, but I knew the spotlight was on this year for uh, AP5, 6s and VCs. So I thought, you know, a little bit of hope inside, a bit of excitement. Can I do it? Oh, if I'm half thinking it, why not give it a go? I really admire you, Alison. I really do. Now, w would that be one of the, the longest drives that you've ever done? This is its maiden voyage out of the state. So I've covered three states now. So, um, yeah, I didn't push the issue. Uh, people were saying, you know, did you sit on the limit? And I'm like, no way, Jose. Um, tortoise wins the race here. So, yeah, I sat on 80, well, 50 mile an hour yeah. 
I took it easy. Yeah. I don't think I passed anyone. They all passed That's me. That's all right. That's not what it's about. It's about getting here safely. I wanted it and in one piece. Exactly. Yeah. And, and yeah. the old girl will be capable of much more than that. But oh, get some uh, boogies, let me tell you that, for free. But the fuel economy, not so great. Yeah. yeah. Alison, thank you so much for being on today's show. You've got to love that. An original vehicle, mm-hmm. a strong family link and an emotional tug on the heartstrings yeah. through the family. No, a lady here. Yeah. yeah. A lady here that can remember the car when she was a little girl. Yeah, Does the it? car go back seat with a German Shepherd. There Absolutely. In the back with the dog. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Alison. Excellent. Thanks, Fletch. Cheers. Appreciate it. Of course, Shannons are here at Chrysler on the Murray for 2018, and of course, they're here for us as well. If you have anything to do with a vehicle club, whether it be classic bike, classic car, or classic truck, make sure it's listed with the Shannons Club for all the world to see. For more information, find out more about the Shannons Club at shannons.com.au. Well, of course, we have the original class of car. We have the preserve class of car. We have the restored class of car, and then we have the restored that, well, goes to the next level again. How are you doing, Steve? Not too bad, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate. Good. Now, this car here needs its own display tent. It needs its own tubular rail with timber corners. This car is probably one of the most incredible presented here at 2018 Chrysler's on the Murray. Stephen, 1970 VG Coupe. Uh, you've gone all out here, custom mod to the highest degree. Run us through a few things that you've done, if that's possible. We should make this a three-hour episode. Yep. Uh, it's got a 426 Hemi in it, uh, tubular front and rear. Um, it's been five years in the build. My brother and my father have had a lot to do with the car. It's interesting what you've done with the 426 Hemi, shoehorning that in to the A-body. Uh, Cries the small block V8s obviously being offset to make up for the distance of the, the steering box in the yeah. United States. And still with that uh, being evident here, you can see this massive elephant engine that's just over to one side. You've got about 10 mil uh, yeah. roughly on the driver's side. Yeah. You've, you've just made it. Yeah, yeah, we've just made it. Um, there's a lot of exhaust work done to get it in there. Mm. Okay, now we've got an aftermarket uh, all alloy block 426 Hemi here. Yeah. Um, a little bit different to the original one that was first made, but it's the tradition of the Hemi and the 426 cubes. Yeah. We've got two four barrels sitting on top, which look an absolute delight. Yeah. Not a stupid question. We're all going to know it's a powerful engine, yeah. but what sort of horsepower are we looking at? Oh, it's got about 850 horsepower. You say that very casually, Steve. Yeah, yeah they, they think there's a lot more in it, so... Yeah. We look inside the interior of the car, uh, again that's uh, dynamics to the highest end. Uh, the seats scream comfort, the bolstering in the padding, how they've been redone, even in the back seats, it just looks so comfortable. Yeah, it is comfortable. Um, we've spent a lot of time in that in getting that done. We had an upholsterer do that in Townsville and he spent a lot of time with us doing that. And yeah, we've had a couple of cars done by him, so he was quite easy to get along with. Now, speaking of Townsville, now this is your debut here for Cries on the Murray for 2018. Uh, Roughly five years in the build, I think I heard that it's taken. Now, you've come down from Townsville especially. That that in itself uh, is an incredible accolade. Yeah, it is. We drove nearly 3,000 k's to get here, so yeah, it was good. In terms of uh, the theme of the car, did you have it pictured in the beginning as to how the finished product was going to look? Yeah, the whole time along it was to look the way it's looked now. It hasn't really deviated from the original plan too much. And I think that's fantastic advice. If you're doing any restoration, I think it's so important that you have to have that finished product pictured in your mind because if you don't, that can sometimes be where, you know, guys might give up and lose interest, you know? Yeah, Yeah, that's right. But yeah, the plan was started for the car to look pretty much like it does now, and that's the way it's sort of finished and panned out. Steve, I have to comment on the exhaust work too. At first glance, it looks like four inch, about 100 mil, but uh, they're big pipes. What do you? What's going on under there? They're two and a half inch primaries into a three and a half inch system, and three inch up over the diff. That's tremendous, mate. Look, it's the sort of car we could keep on talking about all day. Stephen, uh, thank you so much. And your brother Paul, your father Kevin, uh, doing this, uh, well, helping to do this event for 2018 Proud uh, with going to the extent that you've done with your VG. And it's just so nice because it, it's not overdone. It's just done to perfection. Yeah, yeah. It was always to be done the way it's to be done, not, not too far custom. So, yeah, that's the way we worked it out to be. Good on you, mate. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Fletch. I spend a lot of time out here. The RT Charger's the real deal. An E49. Remember A Charger? I've always got projects on the go, so Shannon's laid-up cover 
helps protect my restorations. I'm Mopar through and through. It's a passion Shannon's understands. I wouldn't insure my cars and bikes with anyone else. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Martin's Panel Masters has three modern accident repair centres. They service Melbourne's inner, outer east and the fast growing south east corridor. Your vehicle will receive the best from state of the art repair equipment finished beautifully from computer based paint mixing systems, finished in Australian compliant spray booths. Martin's Panel Masters, located at Ferntree Gully and Berwick, also Box Hill Panels. Hare and Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerynehouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. Would you believe that 2018 marks the 50th anniversary for the mighty Javelin? And to mark this occasion, the longest line of Javelins in one location is present here today. And I can't think of a better place than here at Chrysler's on the Murray for 2018. My name's David Graham, I'm the president of the Albury Wodonga Chrysler Club. Uh, it's our 26th year and it's uh, broken records again. Um, we've had over 800 entries. Uh, Pre-ended was really big, which was good. Uh, makes things flow really well on the, on Saturday and Sunday. Um, our members this weekend have worked extremely hard. Uh, done a really good job. On us. Um, they've really uh, done a marvellous job. This year we've had entrants from all states and territories. Uh, we've had Alison in a AP6 wagon come all the way from Adelaide. It's a huge effort on her own. Uh, also, Kevin and his sons uh, travelled all the way from Townsville, towed the VG all the way. Um, we're very grateful for them for travelling all, the, all that what distance. Uh, there's also a fair crew come over from Western Australia. Also Victoria, um, a, lot, a lot come up from Melbourne. Uh, there's a few that uh, organised their own cruises up, um, which has been great. Uh, there's a, I see a lot of Tasmanian plates as well. So. Um, it's yeah, awesome. The show, it, obviously it takes a big effort. The club works really hard at it, but uh, the fireys, they, they just do an amazing job year in, year out. Um, there's actually a fire on today and they've, they've organised around that just so they can still be here and, and look after us. Um, so we're very grateful for the fireys help every year. If you haven't attended Crisis on the Murray before, um, I strongly suggest to start planning now for next year. Uh, the, the club will actually start planning straight after this event for next year. Uh, the sw uh, spotlight next year is the V, VF and VG, so especially if you have one of them, um, get in, get your builds finished and um, make the trip over. You'd, you'd be made more than felt, you'll be made to feel more than welcome and um, yeah, just be a part of this, this great event. Good to see the last owner did a few modifications here on the Slant 6. It's got a four barrel intake and uh, also some extractors. And he's installed a, a heat deflector shield. Uh, to me, I think that's more like a little bit of a barbecue hot plate. Uh, the original owner could stop on the side of the road and put a steak on there and his sausages. And I think that makes uh, practical sense. Huge event 2018, the crisis on the Murray. Spotlight emphasis, AP5s, AP6s and of course the VC. Val, how you doing Norm? Good, how you going Fletch? Good mate, good. Thought I'd pick on you because I like this car because of its simplicity. It's a 1966 VC, plain as, a very low spec car but it's in amazing condition. What can you tell us? I was just, I recently just bought it before Christmas. I was going to restore an older car, it had a lot of rust in it and I just thought I'd found something easier to restore for me and something I can turn key and get yeah. registered and enjoy instead of waiting and waiting. Yeah. These are the sorts of cars that excite me because as I mentioned the simplicity and it hasn't been molested, it hasn't, it hasn't been butchered or mucked around with. Here we have an original car from 1966 sitting here in all its exuberance. I love the paint colour. The uh, standard narrow tyres look like probably 
they're a bit wider than a 175, but maybe a 195. Uh, we've got the nice dress rims on there. It just takes you back to that time, doesn't it? it sure does, yeah. No, it's just pretty standard. It's a sport for a cruiser. Yep. Probably just got a holly in the long run of manifold and tractors, and that's about all it's done. Motor's original. Matching numbers. Isn't it interesting too when you look at the specs of the car back in 1966 where the proud owner, uh, Mr. Bate, I looked at the uh, the original glove box yeah. manual that you've got there, or the, the owner's book there, and Mr. Bate would have been very proud back in 1966 to have bought his brand new Valiant up in Queensland. Uh, as nice as this car is, we look at the dash area, radio delete. Yep, no heater, just air vents, so I'm preparing for the winter, I've got to buy some dunas. <laughs> I love how straight the car is, Norm. You look down the side profile, either side, it's straight as a gun barrel, it's it's just an, a perfect example of a body for this VC. Yeah, I'd probably be 70% original Survivor cars, just a little bit of touch-ups here and there. But all the, the top of it's completely original with a paint on the top. Yeah. And you can even see the steering wheel where Mr Bates' hands did all that work for so many years. Uh, a bit of abrasion yes. there on the white wheel. And you can see on the door too, the door top, all the paint's worn off. It's got a story. Good on you, Norm. Thanks for uh, for doing the, the VC Proud and bringing it to this year's event, mate. Thank you very much, Flex. You're okay, welcome. cheers. Thanks, mate. Well, what do you say about that? You have seen just some of the largest Mopar event in the Southern Hemisphere. Chrysler's on the Murray for 2018, brought to us by the Albury Wodonga Chrysler Club. I'm also proud to say that you've seen it first on Classic Restos. As I say at the end of every episode, until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hair and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters.